Please welcome Yoshinori Kitase, producer, Final Fantasy VII Remake. I am very happy to be able to introduce this long beloved title once again. After 22 years, the familiar characters we love have returned while becoming more beautiful and captivating than ever before. え、今までオンエア続けてくださってるファンの皆さん、長年のサポートありがとうございます。え、大変お待たせいたしました。新たなる冒険へと共に踏み出すことを非常に楽しみにしております。7のリメイクすにあたって、ファイナルファンタジー
With the use of his iconic gun arm, Barrett is able to target enemies at a distance. Barrett's standard attacks generate ATB charges similar to Cloud, but his abilities are entirely different. Switching between characters in combat is done with a single button press, which makes rotating through party members a snap. Speaking of other party members, Katasi-san, when are we going to see Tifa in action? Maybe, maybe soon. Soon. All right. Characters will continue to fight even when you're not controlling them directly, but it's up to you to choose how and when ATV charges are used. You can maximize your effectiveness by switching between characters or issuing commands to characters with full ATV bars. Every enemy has a focus gauge that fills up as you do damage. When the gauge is full, the enemy becomes staggered and you'll deal bonus damage. Tactical mode evokes the command selections from the original Final Fantasy VII and allows players to enjoy battle while taking the time to think strategically. For players who prefer fast-paced action, abilities and spells can be bound to shortcuts for immediate execution. Shortcuts make combat extremely dynamic, but the choice of using them is entirely up to you. Right, Katase-san? That's right. The game has been made so that you can choose how to play. I hope players get excited about this. Well, that's a brief introduction to combat in Final Fantasy VII Remake, and we look forward to showing you a whole lot more in the coming months. For now, let's see how Cloud and Barrett do against a more formidable foe. Thank you. 
Everything showed you how it's done. Come on, we got me. Please welcome Tetsuya Nomura, director, Final Fantasy VII Remake. Thank you for joining us, Nomura-san. It is an absolute honor to have you here. Katase-san, how do you feel working with Nomura-san once again on Final Fantasy VII Remake? Yes, I'm working with the first one of FF7. I've been working with the first one of FF7. I've been working with the second one of FF7. I've been working with the second one of FF7. I've been working with the second one of FF7. I've been working with the second one of FF7. I've been working with the second one of FF7. Since the original Final Fantasy VII, I've worked with him on many titles, but it has been a while since we've actually had him work so heavily on a project like this, from the direction to character design to the story. And I'm really happy to see him working on this title with the same passion that he had 22 years ago. Yes. Yes. 結構長い間お待たせしましたが、えー、ずっと応援してくださっているファンの皆様、えー、本当にありがとうございました、えー、そしてですね、えー、皆さんあの今日初めて、えー、プレイ画面を結構長めに見たと思いますがおそらく想像してたものとは少し違ったんじゃないかなと、えー、思っておりますそれでは、ご視聴ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。でですね、えー、まあ、そういうわけなので、皆さんぜひ触れてみたいんじゃないかなと思いましてですね、実際に、えー、触ってみたいですかね。And I was wondering, do you guys want to actually play the game? ということでですね、明日から開催されます E3 のですね、スクエニックスブースの方で、セブンリメイクプレイアブル出展していますので、ぜひ機会のある方は触れてみてください。So, we actually have playable demo kiosks available at the Square Enix E3 booth. So, I hope you have the opportunity to try it out. So, we have a lot of people who are going to be able to get a lot of people who コンサートの方でショート版のトレーラーを公開しましたけども、今日はあのロング版をご用意してますので、ぜひご覧ください。So finally, there is something that we wanted to show you.、Um, yesterday we showed you a short version of a trailer at the Final Fantasy VII concert. But today, today we have a longer version. Okay, sorry about that. Very, very long.、Uh, pause, I guess. But live streaming on my World Who Bell Live channel has been disabled. So I'm just streaming on Twitch and Mixer for right now. And I guess I'm gonna have to transfer that over. Tonight, probably. I'm just trying to figure out why. It didn't give me any reason as to why. Not a single reason. It didn't give me strikes, it didn't give me anything. All it did was disable my fucking live streaming. Have you been? 
been a good girl. I heard you're having second thoughts. I know we have to think big if we're going to make a difference. But not like this. I just... I feel trapped. I've never watched, a f I've never played a Final Fantasy. I'm sorry. I think I'm just here. just here for uh, obviously new game announcements of like completely different series and then maybe some like Life is Strange stuff Okay, and that's all I care about. Hey, just the sun I, wanted to see. I haven't played two or three. We'll probably play it sometime this week. Got plenty of time. I've only played episode one, and hopefully we'll be live streaming two and three. See, now, now all this is spoilers. <laughs> For me. To be honest, it was, I'm not a huge fan of Life is Strange 2. Message. I probably should not show that on stream. <laughs> Usually, don't get Xbox messages. Yes, fuck the police. Fuck the police. And love the liberal. Strange too. From A 
Ages long ago, Miasma has blanketed the world. Crystals keep a deadly Miasma in check, but the crystal's power is not eternal. These are the chronicles of brave young adventurers who journey to protect their home. These are the Crystal Chronicles. If we had no crystals, Miasma would consume us all, correct? Never did I imagine that it could be so bright. In online multiplayer mode, caravan with friends wherever they may be. Keep the adventure close at hand. The journey now unfolds on smartphones. Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Remastered Edition. This winter, embark on a new journey once more. Still trying to figure out this live streaming thing. Fuck, man, I just don't understand why. Oh, yes, a switch. shores of the Isle of Awakening, and with the help of your spirited and mysterious companion, Malroth, it is up to you to doff your mallet and club, unravel the riddles of this land, and defeat the hateful children of Harkon. Travel the diverse islands and discover your true potential as a master builder. Yay! There is a land of adventure with many islands offering unlimited building combinations. You will have to master new crafting skills on each island, with more to do and even more to create. <laughs> Everything in Dragon Quest Builders 2 is much, much bigger. Build huge structures in a larger world with more variety and options than ever before. And with a little help from the eager islanders. The world is humongous, and you'll need your wits about you to get around. Run across open fields and explore ruins, treacherous mines, and spectacular castles. Dive into the watery depths to discover hidden... 
hidden treasures, climb the highest mountains to catch the sunset, and glide home to rest up for your next day of adventure. But beware, monsters roam this land and will need to be dispatched with cunning composure. Luckily, accompanying you on your quest is the enigmatic Malrock, an aggressive amnesiac with a fondness for fighting bows. Use power to on the battlefield to take down monstrous beasts. I'm not interested in any of this stuff. Work together with your villagers to till soil, plant seeds, and raise a multitude of crops. So cool. Be sure to customize the way you build your fields to support the kind of crops you're growing. Harvest anything from the humble cabbage and wheat to tantalizingly tasty tomatoes. Big projects require big, big help. You and three friends can team up online to build anything you can imagine. Let your creativity run wild! is your imagination so call on your friends and build your fate together the road you build is paved with peril young builder only you can defeat the children of Hargon bring an end to destruction and save the world in Dragon Quest Builder Ugh, it's all of this shit is this anime weeb shit. Come on, man. Of 
Over the last few decades, we have seen a fascinating evolution in racing games. And nowadays, you can drive almost any type of car on amazing recreations of the best tracks in the world. However, we believe it's time to try something different. We want to do this by reviving a style that pioneered racing games decades ago. Our game The fuck? Which brings together a whole range of styles and eras of motorsport. We are delighted to share this moment with you. And show a sneak preview of our game, which Square Enix Collective will publish in 2020. Join us for the ride and see you again soon. Battalion 1944 recaptures the core of classic competitive first-person shooters. You'll need to quickly coordinate strategies with your team on the fly, whilst keeping your movement nimble and your aim precise if you hope to beat out the competition. There are multiple game modes for you and your team to dive into. Test your skills in domination, capture the flag, or team deathmatch, and perfect your tactics in the highly competitive wartime game mode. Face It's competitive toolset is fully integrated into the game, bringing world-renowned competitive matchmaking, 1v1s, tournaments, rankings, and leaderboards. Kill enemies, win matches, and rank up to demonstrate your Battalion 1944 prowess and unlock visual customization rewards. Each season will bring challenges for you to complete and medals to unlock, whilst tracking your in-game accomplishments and providing you with an easy way to compare them against your friends via in-game leaderboards. Halt the Axis Offensive in their tracks with the Rapid Fire PPSH or take fire with Pixel Precision with the Mosin Nagant and a whole host of new weapons just as deadly as their owners. With a range of environments to test your skills in and a variety of weapons at your disposal, play as a team and compete to be top of the leaderboards. Available now on Steam. Whoa. <laughs> this is actually funny. But not YouTube music. Okay. I use YouTube music.
Please welcome Naoki Yoshida, producer and director, Final Fantasy XIV Online. Hi guys, my name is Naoki Yoshida, producer and director of Final Fantasy XIV. So we'd like to take a little bit of your time to show off um, Shadowbringers Final Fantasy XIV's third expansion pack, which is releasing on July the 2nd. え、2013年に新生オルゼアレルムリボーンが発売されてから、え、6年が経ちました。え、なんと世界で累計登録関数1600万を突破し、え、なんとこのですね、漆黒のヴィランズの発売を前にして、有料会員数も過去最高を更新
has risen up in its place, born of the self-same ether relinquished by its predecessor. to try to save it. This world has had its fill of heroes. we gave what was it for And sacrifice. The will of the star was made manifest. I'm sorry, I can only assume I misheard, but it sounded an awful lot like you were implying both Zodiac and Hydaelyn are not gods. But they are gods after a fashion, yes. The eldest and most powerful of primals. Damn, man. Keeps being like a
Just a bunch of more fucking weeb shit, man. I'm, like, literally fucking done. We got that little taste of Life is Strange, and... What can I say? It's... I'm really pissed off that my fucking live streaming got disabled on YouTube. Really pissed, actually. tribes into Ardura's mightiest militant state. Wesset, the great eastern kingdom over which reigns its icy despot. Crystal Sanctum, a religious city... I see a common theme. The women have huge tits. <laughs> Is the curtain drawn on a struggle in which the fate of nations rests? All is for one's homeland. War of the Visions, Final Fantasy, Brave Exvius. Now in development. Gears of War. Outriders. Sorry, guys, just playing with my mustache. You know how it is. <laughs> you know, it actually starts growing. Yeah. 
Please actually letting it grow. Sebastian Wojciechowski, studio head. People can fly. People can fly. This is this my this caught my interest. All right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Sebastian Wojciechowski, studio head of People Can Fly, the studio behind Bulletstorm and Gears of War Judgment. Yeah. Any Bulletstorm fans in the house? All right. Well, let me tell you, it feels great to be here and feels amazing to be able to finally announce Outriders. It definitely has that Gears of War look to it. People can fly. You guys are amazing. And I know that some of you are watching this live, even though it's 4 a.m. in the morning in Poland. So make a noise for them, please. Please clap. Square Enix for the help and support as we work together on this exciting new IP. You know, over the past few years, People Can Fly has grown to over 200 developers and four studios across Poland, the UK, and most recently the US to bring you what is our most ambitious shooter to date. To present more, <laughs> to present more huh. vision, I would like to take Someone needs to shut these people up. A short video from our game director, Bartek Mita. So thanks a lot. More on Outriders this winter. Thank you. Shooters are in our DNA. It's our passion. And it's what we do. Outriders draws on all our experience from all our previous titles. It's a game we wanted to make for a very long time. We describe Outriders as a dark, modern shooter built with traditional values. By that, I mean, we are creating an experience with a strong story that you can enjoy with your friends or on your own. We want to tell a complete story. We are confident we are building a shooter with a powerful gunplay, incredible weaponry, and a hostile new world we want to spend many hours in. It's, it's a game we've had in our heads ever since People Can Fly left Epic Games. Outriders is a 1, 2 or 3 player, drop in, drop out, co -op shooter. In our game, you will create your own Outrider and journey across the hostile planet of Dino in search of the source of a mysterious signal. It's, it's a pretty dark and unforgiving world. And yes, there is a lot more depth to the game, but I can't say too much more right now. It looks interesting. Peak my interest. I wrote it down.
watchers, sever the bonds that tie the lost to this world, and send them off to the next. They navigate the emotions of the living and the dead. They prize life above all else. It's the story of one watcher. Woo. Final Fantasy, yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, wait, we're gonna re remastered. Oh, oh shit, I'm sorry. Remastered. Okay. Okay, I'd I'd be intrigued and to play a remastered version of the older games. Not a superheroes fan. How does this pants grow? Action, action, explosion, explosion. Wow, so cool.
call them murderers. Do the Avengers pose a danger to society? That was the question, Bruce. That was the question. Well, we all lost something that day. But that's not how this story ends. It's a fucking Avengers game. Please welcome. Is this conference over yet? <laughs> Creative Director Crystal Dynamics and Bill Roseman. The only thing I'd look forward to to tomorrow is uh, Nintendo. adventure with cinematic storytelling a game where we as players can experience in both single player and co-op what it's like to be earth's mightiest heroes do i have any true believers in the house <coughs> yeah. awesome because you will instantly recognize your favorite superheroes and villains but you'll also see that they're unique to this game as this is Crystal's interpretation of these iconic characters. Our story begins at A-Day, as San Francisco celebrates the opening of the Avengers West Coast headquarters, and the team's custom helicarrier, outfitted with a strange experimental energy source. However, the day turns deadly when an attempt to steal this new technology results in massive destruction. Blamed for the tragedy, the Avengers are outlawed, and our heroes disband. Five years later, a horrific evil threatens the world, and our only hope is to reassemble Earth's mightiest heroes. You'll play as your favorite Avengers in an all-new original story showcasing authentic Marvel heroism and humanity. It's about losing what matters to you most, and fighting to get it back. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> most importantly, this is a story about self-acceptance in the face of adversity, about embracing our individual powers and learning that together we are mighty. <laughs> You'll lead the team as the legendary super soldier, Captain America. You'll call down the lightning as the Asgardian god of thunder, Thor. You'll channel the anger of scientist Bruce Banner by unleashing the Hulk. You'll gather intel and strike swiftly as the ultimate tactical spy, Black Widow. And finally, you'll blast through the sky as the charismatic Tony Stark. Known to the wider world as the Armored Iron Man. To bring this incredible story to life, we've assembled an all-star cast. I'll let them introduce themselves. So, here we are. Avengers Assemble. 
Who are you people again? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Troy Baker, and I play Bruce Banner. Hi, I'm Jeff Shine, and I play Captain America. Hi, I'm Travis Willingham, and I play Thor. Hi, I'm Laura Bailey, and I'm playing Black Widow. Hi, I'm Nolan North, and I play Tony Stark. There's certain characters I don't think you ever have to be uh, talked into. <laughs> yeah. You know, so we'd like to have you play Tony Stark Iron Man. Yeah, yes. <laughs> uh, you know, everybody always portrays him as this super confident character. And I think it, it's a mask for, for him. I think he's a, one of the most vulnerable guys. I think Bruce is just such a cool character. A lot of people are, are really quick to, to bring out the big green. But I think that, that Bruce is a super complex character. He's fun, and I've never played him before. What is very relatable about Natasha is she's extremely capable, but she's at the core, she's human. She's surrounded by all of this larger than life stuff, and she has to step up to it. I, I feel like Thor got really interesting in the last like 10 or 15 years. For, for me, I, I like where he's kind of landed in the, the public eye, you know? One of the things I think is cool about Cap is I never feel like he uh, he necessarily wants to be a leader. He accepts that he is. I feel like sometimes the best leaders are the ones who don't necessarily want to be, but they're right for the job. Having an original story to tell as well, what they've done at Crystal Dynamics is great. So okay. It's going to be pretty stoked. The Avengers are at their best when they are all together, but the chemistry is <laughs> do not shake. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Can't wait for you to be able to play the game. But right now, you don't have to wait for some exclusive content. Do the Avengers pose a danger to society? That was the question, Bruce. That was the question. Did you even check the science? Did you check? It was a heist. Bruce, no. We were outsmarted. No. The Terrigen reactor was unstable, right. and you knew that, you knew that, and you still paraded it before the entire world. So what? We just give up? We didn't give up, Tony. We failed. At least I can admit that. No. No, we failed him. We failed him. The Budget Avengers. Please welcome Scott Amos, Head of Studio, and Megan Marie, Senior Community and Social Media Manager, Crystal Dynamics. Hello, E3. <laughs> You've just... <laughs> You've just seen a high-level view of the cinematic and character-driven campaign of Marvel's Avengers. But launch is only the beginning of this adventure. Marvel's Avengers delivers a narrative over multiple years. With Are we still talking about this game? At a regular basis. Like the Avengers, you and your friends are stronger together. When's this conference You'll up? assemble into teams of up to four players online. <sighs> it's multiplayer. Where you can customize a growing roster of heroes and defend the earth from ever escalating threats. Oh yes. Oh yes. And to make sure everyone comes on this journey with us, we're incredibly thrilled to announce that every new superhero and every new region will be delivered at no additional cost. Okay, at least that's something. Free DLCs. That's so our promise to the fair. community is that we won't have random loot boxes or pay to win scenarios. Uh oh. Well, mm, definitely win in the crowd. <laughs> Better than EA, that's for sure. represents a collaboration across Crystal Dynamics. Marvel Games, I know you're out here. I Dot Montreal, these guys are here. Nixie Software, our new Crystal Northwest studio, and everyone at Square Enix. So our game is about embracing your powers and living your superhero dreams. We have an exclusive gameplay demo in our booth that will show you more of the core campaign, its original story, and our superheroes in action. 
So, Marvel's Avengers will release worldwide on PS4, Xbox One, Stadia, and PC. What the fuck, Stadia? We got you covered. <laughs> and we're excited to be partnering with PlayStation to bring some awesome surprises to the PlayStation audience. Including early beta access and unique benefits that will bring mm, It's owned by Google. Streaming service owned by Google. But before we go, we have one final glimpse into our world. Including when you'll get to play this game. This is what's next for the Avengers. Thank you, true believers. I mean... I'm not into superhero shit. I think it's overrated, but the game could be interesting. That doesn't look ready. Come on, Tony, live a little. Unbelievable. It worked. It's sort of cute when they're small. Second hang. Okay, just one year. Just gotta wait fucking eleven months. Okay, now conference over. <laughs> There's definitely a few interesting games in here. A lot of weep shit. Play for well, it. It's really great. I mean, I feel like there was a moment that we saw Tony <laughs> flying and he did a barrel. I was like, that was like, yeah, you saw like a montage there at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. that was it. Yeah. That was Square Enix. Uh, uh, so uh, a few games we that were interesting. Obviously, Life is Strange yeah, 2. Uh, I still need to play 2 and 3. He, we'll probably get to that maybe way. sometime this week. Um, you can get a demo in the booth. Oh, in the booth. Yeah, you oh, okay. in the booth. You so can we go need play. to play. This week. Week. I mean, yeah, Tim. Then, uh, I, you appointment. You yeah, I wrote it down. Very exciting stuff. Ladies and Outriders looked very interesting. For this post show, Kevin, are you ready to get the thing going? Outriders, a new, new, very new IP, Three, completely new. What's up and welcome to Kind of Funny's post show analysis. Of I hate how these guys Square fucking do that. Three, <laughs> twenty nineteen live. But you had uh you had that. And uh and obviously uh Marvel there, Avengers, uh I'm not a huge superhero fan. What can I say? I mean but when they started saying, Hey, no this, no that, no this, I'm like, okay, it could be an okay game, right? But like I said, I'm not too into Fucking superheroes. So. So tomorrow we have Nintendo. Let me check the time. I'm really pissed off. They fucking took off my streaming on World 12 Bell Live. My YouTube. Really pissed off. Okay, let me. I almost missed this stream. I was literally playing like a Hoi 4 game, a Hearts of Iron 4 game. I've been getting back into it. And I'm like, I'm like, hey man, maybe I remember there's a conference I have to watch. And I look and I look at the time. It was 8. It was 8.58. <laughs> and it started at 9. So even I, I just clicked stream and then even then I wasn't ready. So, uh, let me see. So. Ooh, Nintendo starts at noon for me. Noon. I'm not going to be up. 
Oh shit, I'm probably not gonna be up. I woke up at like fucking two today. I woke up at uh like th- I told you I woke up at like three like fifty just before Microsoft the other day. I'm probably not gonna be up at noon unless I like stay up all night. Which is a possibility, but then I'll be really cranky for Nintendo and I'll think everything's shit. If I'm up, no promises. If I'm up, we will stream it. If not, uh, wake up late, I'll just, we'll do like a Constellation stream of some, some sort of game, I don't know. Who knows, maybe Life is Strange 2, or I really want to play some multiplayer game, and I'm really trying to get back into some competitive games, so. I don't know, Overwatch, Battlefield, something like that. The the anti-COD movement, fuck you, COD. But, uh, Black Ops 4, or, not Black Ops 4, sorry, Modern Warfare, the new Modern Warfare does look interesting. I've been waiting for Modern Warfare since Modern Warfare 3, man. Modern Warfare 3 is my favorite game, because it was, it was my first ever online multiplayer game, ever. I fucking was playing Modern Warfare 3 on the Wii against other people, on the fucking Wii. (laughs) <laughs> when they release COD games on the Wii. <laughs> yeah. That was before I had an Xbox 360 and started doing uh, multiplayer games on the regular. Uh, like I said, if I'm up for Nintendo, I don't, I don't own a new Nintendo console. I don't own the Switch so, I own, I own a DS. I think my brother owns a, a th- my brother owns a 3DS. So I don't know if they still do shit for that. I doubt it. But I don't own a, uh, I don't own a Switch, man. I'm wanting to get one. They do. I think they look fun. Oh shit! I lost my, I lost my Post-it note. I want to get a Switch, but I think they're just still they're still just way too expensive. For what you actually get. You know, 300 bucks at the lowest. Uh, you can get a used one for about a little over 200. But it's just like a little, it's just a little pad. And I mean, it's it's a console in its own right. But, I mean, it's, I'd mainly be using it uh, mobily. I'd mainly be using it mobile. Which could be interesting, but like I said, if you walk around with a fucking Switch, you're a fucking nerd. I'm going to be honest. You don't want to be caught dead with one of those. <laughs> I'm going to college. If I carry around my Switch, you don't. I'm not getting no girls. <laughs> uh, but like I said, if I'm up for Nintendo, we will watch Nintendo, but I might not be up. So we'll, I'll definitely be streaming something tomorrow, even if if it has to be late at night or maybe in the afternoon. But we'll definitely stream something tomorrow. So thank you guys for watching. Peace.